Hey there, it is Tom Sher on behalf of Indie Structure Productions once again, and we are continuing on with the great guitar build off slash anniversary build. Now getting to a certain point in the build where the lines start to blur on what step is coming next and whatnot, I have no issues with you using the chapter markers to kind of skip around the video a little bit, as long as you find the content that you're looking for. And I appreciate you just checking out the video in general. So I'm gonna get into it. This time we're gonna be working on, well, whatever it says in the title. So next up, we're gonna start working on the fretboard. Need to, first of all, sand the radius. Now that's gonna be long, boring, and dusty, and I'm gonna look like a coal miner within seconds. What we're gonna be using is a radius block. This is a 16 inch radius, which is, you know, it's my preferred radius when it comes down to it. So 16 inches, radius gauge, radius block, already checked that the neck is absolutely straight and flat. So there's not really much to it. I'm gonna go through 120, 150, 240, working up the grits up until I get the fretboard looking pretty good. Actually, 120, 150, and then once I have the radius done, we're gonna work on the inlays. And once the inlays are in, we're gonna do the rest of the final sanding of the fretboard. But because uh, no point in making it look all nice and smooth and perfect and then going in there and inlaying stuff. So yeah, uh, let's just get to it. I'm not pressing down almost at all because I want the uh, sandpaper to do the work and not me. I mean, now I can still kind of see where it's taking off material, but something that you can do that kind of helps is to just work the fretboard a little bit. Keeps you kind of on track if you start leaning to one side. get started with the inlays. So, I roughly got this out. I'm not gonna waste as much material as with the first one. Oh, once again, my clamp seems to be the issue. It's not locking. Pearl dust is carcinogenic, so wear a mask, really. And good ventilation. Don't breathe this dust. You really don't want to do that. The reason why I'm not is because I'm constantly blowing air on it just to kind of see what I'm doing. There we go. Piece of pearl cut. And next, time to do the abalone. There. All right, now the shaping begins. We have the basic premise of here, and then we just want to flatten that, flatten that, flatten the ends, and be done with it. First things first, I'm gonna get that. Now, I also have an idea of implementing a little bit of brass powder into this inlay. Maybe give it a sort of frame. Headstock inlay, 
for this one. It's going to be, it's a bit more of a special guitar, so I'm going to make the headstock inlay out of Mother of Pearl as well. Now, especially because this is kind of shoddier quality with the bubbles and stuff like that on the opposite side, I'm just going to use this part right here. So I'm going to apply, apply the sticker. Still going to avoid wasting material, but there's, it's got a nice little pattern there, so I'm gonna apply it there, like so. And then we're just gonna transfer that over. So, on the sharp scalpel blade, I'm just scoring pearl. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna not do the same thing that I did with um, the Celeste build, where I did the outlines as separate pieces and inlaid those. This is just going to be a solid singular piece of pearl eye in the middle. Now all I need to do is just mark these out really, fine tune it when it's actually inlaid. There, all the pieces or the parts of it marked out. So I can now cut that out and save it for later. I should say that while I have this camera here and we're talking about inlays, uh, right, so like I mentioned before, there was the issue of the abalone kind of being, well, banana shaped. But I was already going to use um, some of the brass powder in between, like I was going to leave a visible gap between these two pieces and use the brass powder in between as a sort of like kintsugi, like sort of method or kintsugi-esque sort of technique of fixing things with gold. So while I was thinking of doing that in any ways, when it comes time to inlay this, I'm just going to break that piece of abalone so that I'm just going to bend that down, let it break however it breaks, and then if there's cracks and stuff, I'm gonna fill that with the brass dust. And that should, I think, that might look pretty cool. All right, so now the fretboard is radius. So I've done 120 and 150, and it's time to start the inlay. So what I've done here is now I have the 12th fret, now I'm paranoid, one, two, three, four, 12. I have the 12th fret here, I've marked out the dimensions for what we're about to do. Now, technically, I could just inlay these in pieces, which wouldn't be a bad call, but I do want it to kind of like pull together. So I'm just gonna empty out that void there. And to do that, I'm gonna be using the Dremel tool, but I want to have clear cut lines so I don't accidentally go over. And it's still gonna be a good bit of fitting and everything else. So I'm just using the cut to cut here just to get the edges. <laughs> yes, I could definitely use, I probably should use this as a guide. So I actually go straight with my cut here. Trying to keep as many digits on my working surface as possible to kind of minimize any accidental slips or anything like that. And I could do it entirely by hand, but why bother when I can do it a bit quicker and a bit more efficient? So I've already set my depth, so it should be good. Get a little bit of light here and uh, away we go.
Now, because of the paranoid person that I am, eh, I'm going to double check that depth because to me, currently, that looks too deep. So the caliper says 1.6, 1 1.65, um, and these inlay pieces are about two mil. Okay, we're good, we're good. It's just good to check these things. All right. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we're just gonna clean it up with some scalpels, chisels, and stuff like that. Our cavity might go all well and good. I still need to fit the inlay, because more often than not, unless using a CNC, doing stuff by hand, it's gonna take a little bit of fitting. But must be said, I am super excited about this inlay. When designing this inlay, remember when I talked about doing a sort of, sort of kintsugi design of fixing with gold, in this case, brass uh, powder? Well, now the abalone and pearl are in place, and I'm just gonna, I think, originally I was gonna do, sort of hammer it, but I think probably should work if I just, apply pressure with a clamp. Let's see what happens. So. I do want it to break a little more in there. Really trying not to hit my fretboard here. So now we're going to sprinkle on some gold powder, which is brass powder basically. Just to kind of cover all broken portions, hopefully. I have no idea how this is going to work or if it's going to work, but we're, we're going to try it. And then we're going to pour over some glue. All right, and then hit it with accelerator. See what happens. I think a bit too much accelerator, but at least it should cure. So wait for the accelerator to kind of kick off and then sand that all down, keep filling it with dust and uh, stuff like that. And hopefully we'll have a good result in the end. Okay, so I am really pleased. Let's try and focus on that show. It's got cracks in it. Those are filled with gold. And when we apply some 
oil onto this, it's gonna pop like crazy. And I think overall, come on, overall, this just looks badass. Doing geometric shapes is always difficult. It's not perfect, nowhere near perfect, but I think it works well with the whole yin yang sort of original concept that the, uh, well, original guitar had. So I'm gonna keep sanding this and uh, yeah, I think we're gonna continue from fretting. Did I just say that we're gonna move on to fretting this neck? Surely not, because we kind of have a lot to do before that. Fretboard radius, inlay inlaid. Really the next step that we're gonna go for is doing side dots. And I'm gonna throw it back a little bit to side dots that I used to do quite a lot of, which is brass tubing. And we're actually gonna fill that brass tubing with ebony dust. Should be a pretty nice callback. I'm used to doing a lot of loom inlay stuff, but that doesn't really fit this guitar in a sense. So brass tubing is what we're gonna go for. And then, I guess after that, neck-wise, we need to go to the workshop, so I'm probably gonna move on to carving the body, actually. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. But hey, let's get the inlays in place. Essentially, first thing is, I need to transfer over the fret slot positions. Find the halfway point. There. Yep, that's half way there. And now, because there's a little bit of a round over on the edge of the fretboard here, on the edge of the binding, I'm actually going to get my height measurement for the inlay from the bottom of the binding, so the joint line, because that will give me the same distance every time. Three mil it is. There we go. I'm gonna do the first one. And then after that, probably time lapse this, maybe. So jeweler saw ebony dust and leave a 2.5 drill bit. I do need to get myself a nice um, brad point 2.5 mil. Now with round inlay it's always crucial that you're drilling straight because if if you wander the inlay will look lack of a better way of putting it, it will definitely end up looking oval if you do it slanted. So, oop, it's quite a bit of glue. Get some of that off there. Plunk that in place, a little bit of accelerator. And then I don't like to use clippers because that will, because it's tubing, it will squeeze it and won't give me a nice round shape to it. So instead I use my jeweler saw here. Oh, I need to change the blade on it. The jeweler saw does quick work. Like so. And I can give it a couple of taps to really seat it in there. Now I want some ebony dust in there. So 1.5, would that be good? That seems like it's perfect. Of course, now that I'm doing this, a single inlay to show the camera, um, it's a bit slow, but of course, when I start doing all the rest, you'll notice that I, I'll put in all the brass, or I'll drill all the holes, put in all the brass, then drill all the holes again, and then 
apply the powder. But just to show you, I'm doing it now in this way. I'm gonna really get it all up in there. Loading gun <laughs> gunpowder into a uh, old musket here. Really want to get that get that in there nice and tight. And then dollop of glue. And eventually end up with something like this. So time to do the rest. 